Hello, welcome back to the channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings. We generally like to talk a lot of bollocks tabletop gaming in general and in this video we're going to be talking about a game that we reviewed a few years ago and we thought that it would warrant another look so we're going to be talking about Vladish Vartal's Mage Knight and in this game you'll be wandering around a wilderness you'll be fighting monsters you'll be leveling up what will allow you to sack the city and win the game so in this video we're going to be giving you a very brief overview of the rules of telling you what we do like what we don't like come back and we'll tell you whether or not Mage Knight is still worth your time and bother today and in the future. So remember, if you're new here, then please consider subscribing to this channel. Hit the like button and all that YouTube bullshit. We'll see you after this. Bollocks! So, Mage Knight, how'd you play this game? So Mage Knight is a game of exploration that sort of works best in a solo mode, but you can have a crack at it with multiple players, right? There's two types of phases in this game. You're going to have the game round and you're going to have the game turn, right? The game round consists of a number of phases. You're going to flip the day night board and you'll roll some dice that will give you extra mana. You'll also see the cost to move through different terrain. So to move at night is going to be a little bit more expensive than moving during the day, right? Next thing you'll do is you'll refresh the unit offer as you play through this game you're going to be able to hire different types of units to aid you in your quest to sack the city or maybe do over a couple of mage towers right the unit offer is where you're going to be able to buy these units and the offer gets refreshed every round you'll do the same with the actions and the spell offer and then you will shuffle all the cards in your deck and you'll draw a new hand dependent on certain factors you'll then choose a tactic card this will give you an ability for that round and it will also determine turn order yeah and then you will take your turn right after you fucked about with all that bullshit so you'll be able to do two things on your turn actually you'll be able to do a load more stuff but you'll either be able to end your turn or you'll be able to take a regular action and of course you'll be able to rest where you'll be able to get a bit of energy back yeah the way that this game operates is through card play into your tableau you'll see that each card has a different action attached to it and it will have a different value attached to it so if you play a move two you'll be able to get two movement points doesn't mean you'll be able to move two spaces because remember we said that each terrain has a different cost to move through and also dependent on whether you're in day or night time yeah and any card from your deck regardless of what's on it can be played as a move one right oh except wounds but that would be fucking stupid wouldn't it so the other actions you can perform is you can interact with the space that you're on or you can have a scrap yeah the way that you interact with the spaces you'll have to calculate your influence yeah you do it from any play cards or any units that you have in your tableau and you'll also have to add the bonus or penalty from your reputation this is to do with leveling up because at the end of every round you'll be able to move up the level that will grant you extra stuff so if you decide to have a scrap you'll find out that there is range combat and siege combat going to happen first yeah you can only have siege combat if the enemy is fortified right you have to look at the individual tokens to see if it's fortified then you'll have the block phase you'll have to perform a block against each enemy that is attacking you right you'll have to play block cards from your hand and supersede the power of the enemy that you are scrapping and then you have to assign damage to yourself right for every enemy that that was undefeated you'll have to assign enemy to either you or your units and then you'll do your own attack phase you'll do ranged or sieged attack and any card could be played as one attack except wounds your donut so you can heal in this game like you can in most of these types of games yeah you can spend healing from your hand or you can visit a magical glade or you can go to a village spend free influence or you could go to a monastery get a monk to massage your ball bag for two influence cheapest chips mate so in this game you'll be able to level up at the end of each round if you have gone over the threshold then you'll be able to level up you can get command level ups which means that you'll be able to flip the next token from your level pile and use it as a command token right this means that you'll be able to command more units yeah bolster your forces or you could do skill level ups be able to draw two skill tokens choose one stick it in the common skill offer and then choose any advanced skill from the advanced skill offer right and you could do some other crap with that but i can't be asked to waffle on about that bollocks so once you feel that you have leveled up quite a bit and you are strong enough to take over the city you'll advance on the city you'll have a massive rumble and if you complete the objectives of the scenarios that are in the rule book then you will win a game of mage knight so what do we like about mage knight 
So the first thing that we like about this game is the constant feeling of progression, right? You're always going to be having one eye on the next level, yeah, where you'll be getting free stuff, whether it's skills or extra command tokens, right? There are some really tasty upgrades in this game. For instance, you might get some advanced action cards like Blood Ritual, for instance. And this says, take a wound, but gain a red mana token and a mana token of any color, including non-basic. And you can spend mana for different types of cards. So if you've got red mana, you can spend that as attack points yeah or alternatively you might opt for blood rage and this one gives you attack two and you can take a wound to increase this to attack five so there's the chance of doing some real fucking damage as long as you cut off one of your nuggets so yeah i love the way that mage knight is always giving you stuff to do there's always going to be little rewards on offer regardless of where you are in the game or regardless of what you're doing you're going to get them for leveling up you're going to get them for killing enemies and it's like christmas day every fucking day you play mage knight yeah so the second thing that we really like about Mage Knight is an aesthetic quality of this game. Yeah, it's the pre-painted miniatures. I know these are whiz kid miniatures. They're nothing to shout about, but they could have come as these big lumps of grey plastic. But no, they put them in as pre-painted miniatures. And if you've got the Krang expansion, it is actually quite an impressive little beast, right? So that adds to the character and the flavour of the game. I like pre-painted miniatures because I am absolutely bloody useless at painting minis myself. I did try once, but the zombies in Zombicide that I painted looked like they just swam out of a bucket of mushy peas, right? They were that bad. So pre-painted minis, good. Non-pre-painted minis, bad. So what don't we like about Mage Knight? So the first thing that we don't like about Mage Knight is it can be considered as being quite complicated. Yeah, it comes with two bleeding rule books. It's got like a introduction type thing and it's got a main sort of glossary type rule book. And I suppose you lot at the back of saying, well, Fantasy Flight always do that. They've got like a basic rules guide and then they've got a sort of an almanac type thing. But you've got to remember that Mage Knight was released way back in like, was it 2011? This is way before Fantasy Flight cottoned on to the fact that maybe their game's rules were a little little bit obtuse right and it's a complex beast there's loads and loads of little nuances loads of little rules that you've got to remember and i struggle with it when i first played it right it takes a number of plays to remember all of the fiddly bloody rules so there is a massive barrier to entry here i suppose this is one for hardcore gamers only and once you get over that hurdle then the game opens up and it becomes a really really rich and varied experience right so just hold on to the seat of your pants and go with it so second thing that we don't like about major night is it is a long game this game can take well over five hours if you dig into it deep and you think about what you are doing and as a result this really only works as a solo player game maybe you could get away with it with two but if you're thinking about playing this with four players then you are off your tits right i've never played major night with more than two and when i played it with two we never really finished the game we just enjoyed fucking about in the wilderness seeing what we could find seeing what different skills different actions we could get what different spells we could get seeing and how big we could inflate our bollocks right so yeah it's a shame that mage knight really is too unwieldy for higher player counts because i would love one day to sit down and just whack out a game of four player mage knight but i know that that is going to be a physical and mental impossibility so the final thing that we don't like about mage knight is this game is massive yeah it's a huge table hog it's going to take over your whole table you're going to find that you'll be reaching over the table you're going to think well i've got my tableau there you've got the leveling system there you've got all the cards there then you've got the exploration portion the exploration tiles over here and they are going to be expanding as you go so you've got to get everything dead right on the table you've got to make sure that you've got enough room for everything to expand yeah especially the exploration portion you get that wrong you're going to be moving tiles around you're going to be arsing about with different tokens that could be flying all over the place yeah so it is a bit of a chore trying to manage the system that mage knight gives you and i suppose some people revel in this type of shit yeah but I'm a simple person. I'm always after an easy life. And even though I enjoy Mage Knight quite a bit, I'd still struggle to get all of the working parts down in my head when I'm playing it. So to summarise, is Mage Knight still worth your time and bother today and in the future? So we're going to say yes, absolutely. After all this time, I'm still enamoured with Mage Knight. I'm still finding different things in the game. In fact, this is the best solo gaming experience that you can have, hands down. The game starts slow, right? You're going to start weak. You're not going to be able to do much. You're not going to have the command tokens to hire that many units. You're going to be shitting yourself over a stupid fucking orc, right? Yeah, I know. But it builds to a cataclysmic crescendo when you set foot in that city and blow everyone to shit. Along the way, you 
you'll be enhancing your engine with tasty, powerful upgrades. Right, you're going to have spells, you're going to have advanced actions, you're going to be able to hire units, and you'll need to manage all of these moving parts efficiently if you're going to be ready to sack that city at the end of the game. Mage Knight is a game that feels as fresh as the day we first cracked open the box. It never, ever gets old. There's always new surprises in this game, and as such, it's one of our favourite games of all time. So you go, that's Mage Knight. Remember, if you're new here, please consider subscribing to this channel with the like button and all that YouTube bullshit. See you next time.